My name is Karen. I moved to Canada from Israel for one year of student exchange. I wanted the proper North American experience of parties, living with roommates, hiking, skiing, and having the best time of my life. I was imagining Canada as a peaceful country full of mountains, lakes, and wildlife. Yes, this country is beautiful, but it has complexities as well. Back home in Israel, we have homeless people. But it's not like that. Here, it's madness. I'm here to meet Shannon, who lives in downtown Eastside. East Hastings East is well known as a homeless district. People living in tents, as you can see across the street, there's people living in tents. So all along here is like, their houses. This is, our, this is people's houses. People are overdosing here all the time. Like there's sirens all night, all day especially at this time of the month because it's welfare. So everybody just got their checks from income assistance. So this is the time where everybody has got their drugs and they're doing them like crazy. I go up to them and kick their feet and make sure they're alive all the time. If I don't see them breathing, I'll kick their feet and see if they're alive. There's not enough housing and it's so expensive. Like how is anybody supposed to live down here? Unless you have like a $40 an hour paying job by both people living in a house. My name is Shannon. I live here in downtown Vancouver, downtown Eastside. And I'm 44 years old and have two kids and two grandchildren. So when you were pregnant? Uh, 19. Where is the father? He was murdered when she was three. And my son's father cheated on me when I was pregnant with him. So he was not in the picture for me anyways. I came here um, three years ago. That's when I got out of jail. And I had no choice but to live here. <laughs> Why you went to jail? I'm selling drugs I went to jail for. I'm seven months of jail. And I lived in the same unit, right beside a woman that murdered a man. And in the same unit, there was also a woman that murdered her child. Terrible. <laughs> I would never want to go there again. It's okay, come in. What is that? See? That. I'm Thank good. You. Shannon, I'm scared now. I know I am. So we're at the Holborn Hotel, the SRO now, um, this is where I live. And this is a single room occupancy in Vancouver, downtown east side. Do you pay to live here? I do, yeah. How much? I pay for $3.90. You have a shared bathroom and no kitchen. <laughs> what did you do today? I was at the casino. <laughs> Spending my money. From where you have the money to pay for the gambling. Welfare. We are riding in a car for money that you earned in the casino. This car was only $1,500. I won $13,000 on November 5th, 2022 at the slot machines. You just press the buttons. <laughs> it's pretty, pretty simple. It's very much addicting. I never used to gamble before I moved to Vancouver. Validating cards, so it says, welcome Shannon. Oh, I'm out of money. This one I'm going to put the rest of my money in. I'm on income assistance from the government um, called disability, per permanent disability, because I have mental health issues. I have um, anxiety, depression, and post-traumatic post stress disorder. I lived in a relationship for four years that the guy tried to kill me every day. How much money do you have from the government per month? 1300 This is my last spin. And that's it. All the money's gone. Nothing I can do about that. Why do I come gamble even if I lose money? Um, because there's a chance I could win. There's always a chance. Hey, dear. Yeah. There's all this hope. H-O-P-E. Hope. H-O-P-E, -E, yeah. I'm here for um, the rent. Yeah. And the rent is what you see. It looks like a jail cell, right? So how do you know how a jail cell looks like? Because I've been in many, many, many of them. Because? Stupidness. I rob banks, things like that. But you know what? I was young, and now I'm 61. This is Van Du. Um, this is where people come to use drugs safely and get clean supplies for um, for smoking and injecting. Preferably that they stay here to use, so that they can be with somebody in this in case they overdose. You work here. I work here. Yeah. I, I give them naloxone to keep them alive. How many people you saved here from overdose? Over 200. I try to give people vein care, how to use properly without damaging themselves. Injecting is actually the cleanest, safest way to use drugs if you do it properly. The only thing that you're gonna do is damage your veins if you do it wrong. I'm gonna do that with her as well, not sure the proper way to do it. You know, watch, it's easier, don't do that. Relax. Okay, so. 
so we want to go on, we want to go flat against the skin as much as possible. This is called fishing for a bit. Right now I'm at attempting to inject methamphetamine because I haven't drank a lot of water. My, va my blood is very thick, so uh, needles were clogged and I had to switch needles. So right now I'm switching needles. So this will be my last time doing this. Injected? Yeah. The government is short version, yes, they're doing something to help the people, I guess, so you can say, because they're giving a place to, for people to use safely. In the long run, it's not because what they're doing is segregate, segregating the drug users to only a certain area of Vancouver so that we don't interrupt the rest of the society. The government doesn't give a shit whether or not people survive or not. It's just another, another body in this place that they're trying to, depopula to depopulize. On East Hastings, people are addicted to heroin, cocaine, crystal meth. A lot of people start with um, surgery, they go for surgery or they have emergency operation because of an accident and then they get um, put on oxycotton or oxycodone, uh, diladas or morphine and then that is all an opiate. Then they get addicted to it when their doctor cuts them off and then they have no choice but to go to street drugs. They start buying the pills on the street and then realize that fentanyl is cheaper so they use fentanyl. And the fentanyl comes to the hospitals. When you were introduced for the first time to drugs, using drugs. I was my babysitter, actually. So I was 10 years old, and I was with a man who was babysitting me, and he decided to use drugs in front of me. The particular type of drug he used was cocaine in a syringe, and he used needles in front of me when I was 10 years old, and asked me if I wanted some. Asked if I wanted a line. I said no. And he said, well, don't worry, you're not gonna get high the first time you try it. I said, oh, okay, well, all right then. I tried it, and then he tried to molest me. Were your parents? I was adopted. Were adopting parents are good, are, are good people? No, very mentally abusive. Your adopting mom? Yeah, she told me every day that I was useless and that I was never gonna amount to anything and that I'll never be a good mom and I'll never, never be able to do anything. And then I had a terrible life. <laughs> no, it wasn't terrible, but it was not fun. It wasn't pleasant. So this is Crab Park, known to be Tent City. On across the water from us, this is the shipping yard right here where they ship. And right here, you can see the tents from here in the beautiful background. This is where people are living in tents because they have no choice. I would prefer not to go all the way down there. This is where the gunshots come from. There's the police right there. They're just doing their rounds, checking to make sure everybody's not selling drugs and stuff, and making sure everybody's safe. And they go around harassing the people in the tents and telling them to take them down. So at the SRO, there is a lock zone provided for any um, actual overdose um, people do use alone. So there's a possibility people use alone here. And there actually has been overdoses here. Um, one person died right next door to me. And yeah, my passion is uh, the opioid crisis and saving lives and keeping people alive, unlike the government. OK, so this is the Narcan kit. You open it up. This is what's inside. So the person's not responding, so you say, okay, I'm gonna have to give you naloxone. So this is the liquid. Then you have to open it only on the silver dots. You have to fill up the syringe. I always prefer to go to the shoulder because it's closer to the heart and it works faster. And then you give them a shot. The needle disappeared inside. It's for your safety and their safety. When my cousin died from an overdose, that's when I started to get um, involved with the opioid crisis. My dream? It's to be happy. <laughs> I just want to be happy. I don't regret anything because if I had regrets, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't like myself. And if I hadn't made those choices in the past, I wouldn't be the person I am today. You're a real person. You're a good person. Thank you. I don't know who that is.